Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we've got a rather interesting review for you because behind me is the Land Rover Defender but it's not just any Land Rover Defender it's not the 90, it's not the 110 it's the 130, the mother of all Land Rover Defenders it's the largest one you can buy at the moment and I think it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe. it's one of the best luxury SUVs in the market today and it will show you why I think it's a very very interesting choice to look at if you are in the market for a luxury SUV so obviously you already know that Land Rovers have amazing off-roading capabilities they are the benchmark of off-roading capabilities but this Land Rover Defender 130 also comes with eight seats which actually makes it a very very interesting proposition to be used as a luxury SUV. So for today's review, we're going to check out its exterior, jump inside and check out the AC configuration and of course take it for a drive. But before we do all that, if you are a driver in Singapore and you're thinking about selling your used car or consigning it for the best price possible, be sure to check out the link in the description box. We have a link for you there for you to inquire and get a quote. It's free to inquire so please do so if you are interested. And with that, let's get on with the review. All right, guys, so jumping straight into the review, this chonky boy in front of me, this is the Defender 110. And this is truly quite a large vehicle. It measures five point, more than 5.3 meters in length, actually. So um, I often review cars and people always ask me whether or not it's difficult driving these large cars. And most of the time I say that it isn't, but with the Land Rover Defender 130, you definitely do feel the length a little bit, but it's still not difficult to drive. It's just a little bit of getting used to, um, but this is truly quite an imposing vehicle as you can see. This is the kind of vehicle that when you're on the highway, it doesn't matter what speed you're going, people just kind of get out of the way uh, because it's just so imposing. But enough about that, let me go through some of the features of the car. So in at the front, you don't actually see a lot of difference from the 110. In fact, the uh, overhang, the front overhang is actually the same as the 110. Um, and uh, in terms of aesthetics, it's actually quite similar to even the 90. Uh, but of course, you do have these, uh, these are standard, these are sort of, um, I don't know what you would call this. This is not metal, it's made of plastic, but it's, um, actually maybe it's made of metal, I'm not so sure, but um, there are sort of these uh, slats on the bonnet, which look really rugged. Um, this additional 130 emblem is actually an optional extra. Uh, you can get this on the 110 and the 90 as well, but uh, this one says 130 because obviously it's a 130. Uh, at the side here, you have these um, aesthetic side vents, but, these are the ones that are removable should you decide you want to add on the um, air intake, the roof or rather the chimney air intakes. And then at the side, you've got these really solid fixed position, uh, uh, what, what, what would you call them? Side steps, side steps, yes. So these are side steps that are fixed, unlike the Range Rover, which are retractable. But I think all these adds to the aesthetic of the car. You've got some additional cladding here as well. You've got this BC pillar with the nice Land Rover emblem here. Um, this C pillar is actually similar to the one on the 110. You don't get this on the 90 because it's smaller. Um, and in terms of the entire um, uh, uh, wheelbase, this is actually the same as the 110. It's just that the 130 now has this additional overhang here, which makes the car longer and makes it able to accommodate your eight seats. Okay. Um, in terms of wheels, this, these run on 20 inch wheels, so fairly modest, you've got quite a lot of rubber around the wheels as well, so this, these are running 25560 20 inches, and of course you've got your spare wheel cover at the back with the Defender emblem as well, so very cool. So let me open this up and show you what it looks like in the rear. So this configuration that you see is currently with the seats down. So you've got a fairly sizable boot. Unfortunately, these do not fold completely flat. I'm not sure why, but um, it would be nice if they folded completely flat. But in, in any case, um, with the seats up. So I'm going to try and put the seats up now. You'll see that it's actually quite easy to do so. You can just pull them. One. Two. And three. And these are actually really easy to fold up. And um, they are folding in uh, three separate components, not as a 60-40. So they are really customizable as well. And you can see that even with the seats up, you do have space for maybe two, 
two um, cabin size luggage so enough for a short road trip and if you need definitely if you need more space you definitely have the option of putting a roof rack on the car because this this is exactly the type of car that you put a roof rack on um, but enough about that let's jump inside the car I want to check out the interior and I want to show you around the interior as well so let's do that All right, guys, so th this is the interior of the Defender 130. I'm going to start the car up because it's a very hot day outside. As usual, I mean, when is it, when is it not a hot day in Singapore, right? <clears throat> but in any case, um, as you can see, I had a pretty easy time climbing into the car, despite the car being quite large. And I think that's all thanks to the very prominent sidestep that you saw earlier in this review. Um, so I think anybody, uh, no matter your size, you should have a fairly comfortable time climbing into the car. I think all that isn't really going to be an issue. <clears throat> but jumping into the review of the interior, earlier on in the review, I mentioned that the 130 was probably an interesting contender to other luxury SUVs in the market. Um, and... That's, that's definitely something that I that I think is true. But of course, in terms of its interior, the interior does look a little bit more utilitarian than your average luxury SUV. But I think all that is something you just need to kind of get used to. I mean, it is, in terms of appearance, as a Defender, it definitely still has to live up to the functionality that a Defender should provide that the name of a Defender should provide. And because of that, you do get a lot of these interesting storage compartments here. You get some handlebars built into the dashboard. You get open rivets, which I think are super, super cool. I mean, people might think you're crazy for buying a half a million dollar car with open rivets, but I think this is so, so awesome. It looks so great. And I think it's just an entire lifestyle on, on its own. So of course, this interior is built in pretty much a black interior. So it's not fancy, it's not bling, it's not super, super luxurious, but material use is quite premium. So if you touch uh, the different surfaces of the car, you will feel many, many soft touch materials, uh, nice amounts of leather. There's nothing too shiny, glossy, or plasticky though. Everything is all quite uh, uh, cladded so to speak. Uh, you even have open rivets on the center console here, which I think is very cool. Build quality, <laughs> indestructible, dude. Like, this is so awesome. <laughs> like, look at this. <laughs> you can't even hear a single rattle or a creak. And I think that's pretty cool. So, um, but anyway, okay, I'm going to jump into in specific de details here. Um, infotainment unit this runs the latest pv pro system which if you've watched reviews from the past or my reviews from the past you'll know that i think that the pv pro is one of the nicest looking infotainment units on the market it's got such a beautiful layout and interface that this is one car or cars with pv pro i would probably leave the menus in the pv pro's default interface rather than allow it to go into Apple CarPlay settings. Of course, I can still run Apple CarPlay in the background, but I'll probably change it, the home screen to the PV Pro um, home screen, which I think looks amazing, super classy, super neat. It looks just a little bit more upmarket than your average vehicle. Um, and then, in your center console here, <clears throat> it houses all your electronics. So all your controls are actually here. Um, at first glance, it looks pretty confusing. But, actually once you get to know your controls, they are actually pretty easy to use. So, you have your typical air condition controls and these are controllable through these knobs here. So, if you're by default, they control the temperature. If you click on this fan button, then you can control the blower speed. Take note though, this Defender runs a single blower speed from the front, so you don't have a double blower uh, as you get with certain luxury vehicles. But then again, actually, I, I find that less and less cars have these functions, has, has this dual blower functions. I mean, my old F10 has it, has two separate blowers, but this one only has one. Um, then, of course, if you click on this button here, 
it actually controls your drive uh, or your terrain response systems so you can change your car from um, you know eco mode comfort mode grass gravel snow uh, and all your other uh, and all your other off-roading has selector activate no okay so it should be normal okay so it allows you to adjust your terrain response or the car's terrain response and the reason why it can adjust the terrain response is you no know, it, it's also because this car runs on air suspension with three default or three modes so you have SS mode which activates whenever you, you, you shut off the car or whenever you are getting in and out of the car until speeds of 30 km per hour so anything below 30 km per hour or when you are getting in and out of the car the car goes into SS mode which lowers the car making it a bit easier for you to climb in and out of and this is also quite useful if you're trying to enter a car park with a height limit because this lowers the car to 1.87 meters in height or maybe about I would say maybe yeah about 1.9 meters thereabout uh, if you let it run in its regular setting which is the normal middle setting um, which is when the car is also when the car is moving this is the setting that, that it's in regular setting is about will bring the car up to about 1.97 meters thereabout or 1.95 1.97 thereabout and if you bring it to off-roading mode it increases the height further to a height of about 2 meters in height so those are your rough guidelines so if you are out in open country if you're out on open roads you know by all means do whatever you want but in singapore specifically if you're concerned about maximum heights truth be told it will not clear some car parks for example queensway shopping center has a car park limit of 1.8 meters so this car will not clear even in the lowest setting but most modern car parks in singapore today have a height limit of between 2 to 2.1 meters so if you are concerned you can definitely lower your car to ss mode and then enter the car park should not have a problem and now of course here you got other uh, uh, traction control related and uh, your 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 low top gearbox uh, ss points are also here so all these things are very neatly clustered into one little center console here everything else here is storage it's utility as hell but it's so cool uh oh talking about that uh, this is actually a fridge. It's a it's it, it's a it's a center cubby. You can turn it off, and then it becomes a regular um, it becomes a regular uh, storage space. But you can also put stuff inside, and there are two cooling modes: maximum and intermediate. I'm gonna leave it on maximum and leave my water bottle in there. You got a uh, wireless charging pad here as well Two cup holders You've got massive amounts of storage underneath I don't even know what you're supposed to put there Two USB ports A C and a regular one And then 12 volt socket 12 volt socket And that's pretty much it In terms of your steering wheel You have a full digital driver's display in front of you This is the same system that you find on most Land Rover, Jaguar vehicles And then you've got a very nice steering wheel That instead of using uh, leather or chrome materials in the middle it has this sort of a it almost looks like a 3d printed kind of a plastic or like some sort of a it's just a very nice rugged material and i think it all adds to the appeal of the car because I, I think if you don't know what a land rover defender is supposed to do you just think that oh this is like some cheap material but no it actually you know if if you understand what you're buying i think this looks really cool it ties the whole image of the car together and you feel that even when you're seated here despite all the modern technologies around the car despite having an automatic gearbox you still feel like you are in a proper proper rugged vehicle and from your vantage point as a driver you're really elevated you can see out of the car and it's a really amazing experience on the road as well because like I mentioned earlier on in the review people kind of get out of the way for you and, and from this point here you can actually see the um, the the, the, the sort of slats the, the metal slats the metal slats on the bonnet and they look so amazing with that 
let's jump into the back of the car and check out the rest of the interior because the 130 is an 8-seater. So let's go play with the 8-seater configuration and see if it makes any sense to be an 8-seater or whether it's just too small for an adult to be in the third row. Let's go. Okay, so this is the rear of the Land Rover Defender 130 and this driver's seat is in my regular driving position and this is the amount of legroom that I have so pretty awesome, pretty good if you are a passenger in the second row super comfortable car You've got ample legroom the floor is kind of flat as well it's not too much of a hump in fact it's a very very minimal hump so seating 3 in the second row is actually quite doable and you've got enough width in the car as well and nobody has to fight for any leg room so that's pretty amazing in terms of headroom i've got ample headroom as well if i take a more relaxed sitting position i can even put my legs up comfortably and i think this will be a very comfortable car for your family or for your buddies if you decide to go on an off-roading trip together or a long distance road trip together i think this is perfectly usable you've got some grab handles here which uh, assist you when you're getting in and out of the car and there is actually a sunroof as well uh, but I'm not going to open up the sunroof I'm just going to open up the panoramic roof let in some light and uh, this looks amazing this looks really nice it you know, kind of adds to the whole outdoorsy appeal of the car now, um, if you're using this car as a family car you've got isofix points in the rear as well so you can definitely use this to carry children and uh, um, car, car seats and it, actually two rear seats in the back in the third row also have isofix points so technically you could carry four car seats or four children-ish um, in the Land Rover Defender 130 which is pretty awesome so if you've got the kind if you're the kind of person who has three kids four kids um, obviously they can't carry like the rear the rear seats can't accommodate um, full-size car seats the rear facing ones uh, as well but they will be able to, to accommodate toddler um, isofix booster seat so if you've got kids across a range of ages I think this is a very interesting setup the other thing that's quite interesting is you've got movable and slidable um, seats so even if I slide it forward I've still got quite a decent amount of room and if I slide ah, man, this is pretty it's heavy so I want to slide the other side forward as well let me see how I can do this all right there we go so let's see we bring the seats forward a little bit does this look right no this doesn't look right okay so let's see this is the configuration you've actually still got enough space in the rear and what you have done is open up space in the third row for your passengers there and in fact what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something that I've never done before I've never climbed the third row of a seat so let's do that ah. okay okay so what we need to do is to slide this forward and then tip this in front and what this opens up is actually a space for me to climb through so let's give that a go I'm actually going to grab the camera here because you can't see me so now I'm in the back and this is the leg room that I have pretty decent actually and you've even got aircon vents at the rear so that's a that's a real bonus because it could get really warm back here so now Land Rover advertises this as a 8 seater but Realistically, I think more like 6 I think 6 is a good number to carry in this car Will be a comfortable number 
Um, but it's really good to know that this actually allows you to have a rear third row seating that can fit an actual full-size adult and not just a tiny child. Um, so very pleased with that. And what we have to do right now is to go take the Land Rover 130 for a drive. So let's go. Alright, so back in the driver's seat of the Defender 130 and before we go out on a drive, let's get some basic specs uh, and specifications out, out, out of the way. So this current Defender 130 runs a 3 liter inline 6 turbocharged engine and this is good for about 394 horsepower 550 newton meters of torque and Land Rover says that this Defender will go from 0 to 100 in about 6.6 .6 seconds but I think speed is probably not the priority in a car like that so um, unlike Land Rover Defenders of old the new generation of Defenders of course run a automatic gearbox or transmission and uh, specifically in the case of the 130 or actually specifically in the case of the Defender, runs an 8-speed automatic. So this drivetrain is actually quite similar to something you might find on, say, a Range Rover Sport. But of course, that has been tuned up a little bit to a little bit more of a performance spec. So 6.6 .6 seconds in the Defender is not quick by any means, but it's also no slouch. And you can feel that. This car is about 2.5 tons, so it's a pretty heavy car. As you can see as well, it's a very large car. But on city roads, around lower speed traffic, you don't really feel the bulk as well. Steering is nice and light around town. And you have more than adequate power when you are moving off the line, so and so forth. In fact, the turbocharger kicks in quite early. Kicks in as early as, let me see. Seems like about 1.8, 1, 1,800 RPM. There about. Uh, turbocharger seems to kick in already so you've got a decent amount of speed off the line so definitely if you're driving this around town you're not going to feel the heft of the car which I think ties back to my earlier point of how the Defender a vehicle that is traditionally used as a um, utilitarian off-roader you know it actually can actually be used as a very very uh, a day to day luxury SUV as well because if you're driving this car around Singapore my thoughts are that you're not really going to be going off-roading very often in fact most of the time you'll be driving around town and it's good to know that a car like that can actually be used as a daily driver as well it's plush it's comfortable uh, it's quite quiet around town there is a little bit of engine roar I feel like this engine roar is a little bit more pronounced than the one you get in the Range Rover Sport but it's not it's not unreasonable by any means. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it still feels like a proper luxury vehicle. And one of the additional reasons why I think it feels like a luxury vehicle is because this car runs on air suspension, which I think on a vehicle like that, you know, its impact it cannot be understated because we've got a lot of uneven road surfaces uh, due to construction works. And you can see right around here as well, um, there's a lot of broken surfaces, so to speak. And with a car of this weight, when you've got air suspension, this it just kind of irons everything out and everything feels so plush and so luxurious. And I was cruising up on the highways earlier. And obviously, you know, this is not a car that you want to be going absolutely like super fast in because it's, it's got a bit of height to it. So naturally speaking, there is a lot of air resistance. But, you know, if you're traveling around 90, 100, the car is absolutely quiet settles down really nicely no complaints whatsoever and that really kind of got me thinking as well because for the longest time we we think of defenders as these rugged off-road vehicles right and 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 we never really kind of put them in the same price consideration or we never even put them in the same purchase consideration as many of the other luxury SUVs out there but in but in today's context the, the, the Defender has been modernized it's no longer a car that only satisfies the very niche off-roading market and so 
you know, to put it very bluntly, even if you don't give a rat's ass about off-roading and you purchase the Defender, you're not going to feel out of place. In fact, I think it's a pretty cool piece or pretty cool car to have in your garage. Um, it's imposing, it's got that lux factor and, you know, it just makes you feel like you're in a really, really premium vehicle, which I absolutely adore. Now, let's talk about the potential ownership of a Land Rover Defender. So, truth is, this car has 402,000. Currently, at the time of shooting this video, 402,000 without COE. So, if you add in a Cat B COE, which is about, you know, 150 or so, you know, you you bring the price of the car up to about 550,000. Now, the question is, what other cars can you buy with 550,000? So the truth is, a BMW X5, which I just re recently re re reviewed, that car costs about 550,000 as well. And a GLE will cost you a little bit more than 550,000, actually 580,000 to be exact. So those are pretty expensive cars and the X5 has recently been sort of downgraded to a 5-seater as well so you no longer get 7-seater capability. Uh, granted, that's probably for the better because the third row was rather cramped but the point I'm trying to make here is for $550,000, you can buy this Land Rover Defender, you can buy an X5 or you can buy a GLE. Now, what you think about the various brands and how you feel about the luxury standards that they convey that's completely up to you that's very individual uh, no one can really tell you uh, what the right thing to do is but this car does have eight proper seats or as i showed you earlier six proper seats which makes family hauling you know actually a very realistic proposition in this car the gle uh, I can't remember if they have stayed. They still have seven seats, but even if they did, you know, it's a it's 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 quite a it's quite a a compromised situation, so, so to speak. So cars like that, you know, cars like you know, like the the X five and the GLE, I would consider them to be just very large five seaters. Whereas this this is a proper six or seven seater, which I think really ups its value proposition by quite a bit. The other thing to consider as well, you know, the X5 has also seen some compromises in terms of its suspension. So instead of the air suspension that it used to have in the pre facelift version, it now has adaptive M suspension. So still adjustable, but it's not air suspension. Not air suspension in the same way that this car has. Now granted, this is also not quite as comfortable as the e-tron as the, as the q8 e-tron 50 that i drove earlier uh, but it is a very very plush car it is still a very luxurious and a very comfortable car so i think if you're in the market for a luxury suv that's got the space that's got the stature that's got the right comfort for you and your family for longer distance journeys I think people could potentially change their mindset and put the Defender in the same uh, purchase bracket or in the same league as cars like the X5, the GLE um, and potentially even against electric SUVs that are sitting around this price range. So around this price range, you've got so many premium cars to buy, right? You've got this car, you've got GLE, X5, you've got iX, the BMW iX, which is absolutely comfortable. You've got the Q8 e-trons, which are super comfortable as well. So it's quite a lot of considerations here. But one thing that the Defender has that the others do not is, of course, its proper off-roading capability. So not to say that you will actually use it, but, you know, if you if you are thinking to yourself, you know, you know maybe I'm like... Uh, or maybe during your midlife crisis, you know, you feel like you might want to go and do some off-roading. Then here you actually have a car that's fully capable of doing so. It's capable of doing full-on expeditions to God knows where. Uh, and it still brings you all the luxury, luxury factors. And for me personally, what I think is the biggest selling point is the fact that it has a very specific styling that if you're into it, there's nothing like it. Right? If you're into this, this sort of open reverts, rugged look, 
um, larger than life kind of feel I would say it's pretty hard to match the Land Rover Defender 130 at the moment so pleasantly surprised by this car you know I I thought it was going to be a bit more utilitarian but it turns out you know I think this is absolutely wonderful um, even if you're looking at it from a Singapore context so if you have any other questions about the Defender 130 that you want to post to us or that I didn't cover please feel free to put your questions in the in the comment section below I'll do my best to answer them usually I try to answer all comments uh, unless they are a bit nonsensical um, but yes generally I try to answer those questions so please put your questions in the this in the comment section and if you found this review useful or if you've enjoyed it in any way please consider giving us uh, giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because we have YouTube oh my god this car is so big that you can't really load okay okay it's reading yes nice yes please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because we've got new reviews coming out every single week and actually on that note if you want to check out the review of the X5 you can click up here um, we've also we've already done that, re re that, that review so you can take a look at that and actually if you want to check out the review of the Audi Q8 e-tron 50 the review is also up here um, so that's all cool um, one last gentle reminder if you are a driver in Singapore and if you want to sell your car for the best price possible or consign it for the best price possible be sure to check out the link in the description box below because through that link we will be able to provide you the highest possible quote and valuation for your used car it's free to inquire so please definitely check out and get a quote from us and with that Please take care of yourself, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.